Here's experiment 13, aluminum analysis. What we are doing is starting with aluminum from a soft drink can, and the purpose of the lab is to figure out how much of that soft drink can is actually pure aluminum. The way we're doing that is we're taking the can, and the aluminum that's in there will react with hydrochloric acid, and it'll produce hydrogen gas. And we are gonna be collecting this hydrogen gas above water, so if you remember, if you collect gas above water, you've trapped it successfully, and that's great. But we have to remember that when you're collecting gas above water, that the total pressure there is made up of the gas and the water vapor that's above the water level. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we're doing our calculations. We're gonna collect the hydrogen gas, measure it, and then work our way backwards to see how much aluminum was actually present in the soft drink can. And then when you're asked to find the percent of aluminum, here is our equation that we'll use to find percent aluminum. The procedure is shown in the video here is the vapor pressure of water at different temperatures. So once we know the temperature that our gas is collected at, we'll come find what the pressure of the water vapor is so that we can subtract it out. You'll complete all of the pre-lab. And then for the data, trial one will be provided in the video. Trial two will be provided in the data info sheet. So you'll complete the same calculations, but using different values. So here's your um, aluminum sample that you're, you're given. That's the amount of aluminum um, soft drink can. Here's your instructor's approval. So you're gonna collect the volume of hydrogen, and in the video, you'll be reading the burette to find the volume of hydrogen. You'll wanna make sure that you read that burette to two decimal places for correct significant figures. And this will be your V value. So when we go to work with PV NERT, this is our V for volume. Temperature at the collection site, that'll be your temperature in PV NERT. So there's your temperature. And then you'll also use that temperature to find out the water vapor. We'll, we'll go look at that here in just a second. The barometric pressure will also be given to you and that will be the P total. So remember a few minutes ago I mentioned that P total is equal to P of your gas plus P of your water vapor. And in this case, the gas is hydrogen gas. So we're going to be given the P total here, but we need to subtract out the pressure of water. So what we'll do is we'll take this temperature that we're given and we'll go up to our table Whatever that temperature is, we'll take this amount of pressure and record it as the water vapor pressure. So we'll get this water vapor pressure from that table. So the table in your manual, you'll be able to find what the vapor pressure of water is at your temperature. And so then to get the pressure of dry, you'll take your P total and you'll subtract out your P water to get your P of just your hydrogen gas, which is what we actually want to use as our P. So at this point, what you'll see is we have our V, we have our T, we have our P, and so we can then find moles by using PV inert. Because if you'll notice, we know P, we know V, we know R and T, so we can find N. And then once you know the amount of hydrogen that's produced, the moles of hydrogen, you can then come down and calculate from moles of aluminum, or from moles of hydrogen, to moles of aluminum, and you'll want to look back to that mole to mole ratio. You go moles of hydrogen to moles of aluminum, and that's that two to three mole ratio using the balanced equation. 
and then you can go on to grams of aluminum using molar mass. So that's how you can do calculations four and five. And then your percent by mass for your aluminum. You'll be taking your mass of aluminum in your sample, so number five here. That's your amount of aluminum over the soda can, which was way up here in number one, times 100. And that'll tell you how much of the can was actually aluminum. So you'll do that for both trials. Then you'll complete the post lab questions here as well.